The show opens up with some students of Sung Yin High School playing football while others are studying in the classroom. At the same time, a lot of mysterious spheres are seen floating and covering up the whole city. After class, two students, Kim Chi Yul and Kim Dyok Jun, discuss the strange alien spheres that have been hovering in the sky for about a year. Here we get to know that numerous scientists conducted research on the spheres and came to the conclusion that they are not harmful to humans. No one knows where it came from, but the people are at least relieved to know that they are not dangerous. As they walk away, Chi Yul tries to talk to Young Hoon, the top student who gets bullied a lot but remains resilient. Unfortunately, Young Hoon ignores him and heads home on the bus. On the way, he watches a YouTube show discussing the spheres and the rumors surrounding them. Meanwhile, the military inspects a fallen sphere, and here we are introduced to Lee, one of the prominent soldiers. Their commander soon arrives and orders the soldiers to shoot at the ball, but when it does no damage, he suggests using an RPG missile. As soon as the soldier shoots at the sphere, a loud bang is heard. Then, some purple creatures start emerging from it. Elsewhere, after their usual four-week break, the students return to school and immediately resume their typical antics and rivalries. Their homeroom teacher, Park Eun Young, distributes report cards, but before she can begin the lesson, she is called away. When Eun Young returns, she seems uneasy and delivers the news that early college admissions have been cancelled. The top students in the class are worried and confused, while the dumbasses are happy and relieved. Despite the teacher's efforts to continue with the lesson, the students begin to murmur among themselves, and the classroom becomes restless. The teacher then turns on the TV, and the students watch as the Minister of Defense addresses the nation. The minister announces a national mobilization, which mandates the drafting of even third grade high school students into the military. Everyone is shocked by this news, but the minister reassures them that education education will still be prioritized, and they will receive extra credit for college admission. After this, the teacher explains to the students that only those who participate in military training will receive extra credits. After she leaves, the military arrives at the school to prepare for the training. The next morning, the students arrive at school with their favorite belongings, including makeup and non-essential items that they think they cannot live without. The teacher then introduces First Lieutenant Lee as the class platoon leader. As the briefing begins, Lee informs everyone that the training will take place after regular classes. He also explains that from this day forward, the students will undergo military training for several weeks and will not be allowed to leave the school environment. Yu Jiang, the class president, is immediately appointed as the leader, while Chi Yol is tasked with documenting everything during the training. Any student who goes against the commander's orders will face a point deduction as well as a penalty. After the explanation, Sergeant Wan Bin directs the students to their respective dormitories. They put away their belongings and immediately gather to undergo training in the schoolyard. In the next scene, the soldiers distribute firearms to the students, but some express doubts about being trusted to handle them. A few try to showcase their experience with <laughs> online games and start playing around with the guns. Soon after, Lieutenant Lee arrives and restores order among the students. He then punishes the guilty ones, making them run until they are completely exhausted. Surprisingly, despite the grueling training, some female students fall for the lieutenant's charm and become captivated by his looks. After a while, the students return to their barracks, completely broken and tired. During the record keeping, some leave messages for their parents, feeling deceived by the experience, while others cry out for their mothers. Later that evening, a boy named Il Ha shares a video of the military shooting and killing animals mercilessly. Dyok Jung speculates that mass killings only occur if there is a virus spread in the city, or in the event of a war. While they discuss this, Young Hoon tries to leave the room, but the noise attracts Lieutenant Lee's attention. He admonishes Young Hoon for trying to leave alone, and in response, the latter reveals that Il Ha brought his phone to the training. Hearing this, Lieutenant Lee confiscates Il Ha's phone, making him angry. As a result, he becomes vengeful towards Young Hoon, and the two almost come to blows. Lieutenant Lee immediately intervenes and sends them outside as punishments, but even there, they continue arguing. Fortunately, Chi Yol arrives and manages to defuse the situation before it escalates further. Just then, a giant sphere suddenly falls on the school building, landing in front of the three students. But instead of reporting it, they continue arguing, and in the heat of the moment, Quan Il Ha pushes Young Hoon toward the sphere. Shockingly, the sphere transforms into a monstrous creature resembling an octopus that entwines Young Hoon's body and devours him alive. A terrified Chi Yol attempts to approach the creature, but right then,
then, Lieutenant Lee arrives at the scene and stops him. After this, the creature retracts into the shape of a ball and goes away from there. Contrary to popular belief, that octopus was not sexy. Later, when the homeroom teacher, Miss Un Young, learns of Young Hoon's death, she is devastated. She nervously suggests sending all the remaining students home, but Lieutenant Lee informs her that he has received orders to keep the truth under wraps and to take appropriate military action. He urges Un Young to persuade the students to keep quiet about Young Hoon's death so that panic doesn't ensue. With no options left, Il Ha and Chi Yul also agree to lie about Young Hoon's disappearance, telling their classmates that he was badly injured and sent home. As the school returns to normal, it becomes clear that the sphere was not the only threat facing them. The government and military are trying to hide something even more dangerous, and the students find themselves caught up in a deadly conspiracy. Elsewhere, Lieutenant Lee is haunted by a painful memory of what happened to his division when they encountered a sphere while using an RPG gun. The sphere exploded and unleashed a vicious attack, resulting in the loss of many lives. The following morning, curiosity arises among the students who wonder about the mysterious sphere that fell in the school building the previous night. However, Ilha and Chi Yol are still saddened by the incident, so they don't speak a word. In response to the sphere falling dangerously close to the school, military commander Park Yong Il calls for intensifying the students' training, including firearm use and self-defense. Although Lieutenant Lee is initially hesitant, he realizes the necessity of the decision. The students also get on board with the plan and start attending their new classes. As expected, the firearm training proves to be challenging for most, but not for a brave girl named Lee Na Ra. She handles the weapons with ease, firing them accurately at the target. As the days pass, the training continues, with the students recording messages for their parents and learning essential life-saving skills, like CPR. Gradually, they adjust to their new normal, while Chi Yol starts harboring a crush on Na Ra. One night, Chi Yol has a nightmare and seeks comfort from Li Na Ra in the classroom. Afterward, they both return to their barracks, leaving Chi Yol's growing feelings for Na Ra more evident than before. In the next scene, Lieutenant Li checks on the sphere that fell on the school grounds. It turns out that the military has covered it with a hollow dome and frozen it, but they still know very little about the sphere. The following morning, the students prepare to leave the school premises to practice practice shooting with real bullets. As they walk the streets, they are surprised to find them empty. Not a single person is visible as far as the eye can see. After a while, the training begins, and the sound of gunfire initially scares the students, but they soon adapt. As expected, Nara performs ex exceptionally well, hitting the targets with the utmost confidence. Everyone is impressed by her performance, and she also receives praise from the soldiers. Lady, you're a good hot. I mean, a good, uh, thought. A uh, shot. On their way back, Lieutenant Lee hears a sudden noise coming from the distance, so he orders everyone to stay together and wait. However, using this opportunity, two brats decide to visit a convenience store they passed on the way for snacks. On arriving there, they find the place deserted, so they quickly grab some snacks that they had been craving for. When teacher Park Un Young finds out about this, she takes charge and quickly communicates with the soldiers to search for the missing students. Right then, another student, Kook Young Soo, gives her a lead that the brats might have gone to the nearby convenience store. So, without wasting any time, Time, Un Young rushes to find them along with a senior student, Kim Yoo Jung. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Lee and Sergeant Kim Wong Bin notice a large crater made by the sphere and get worried. There is also a trail of blood on the ground, so the two follow it to investigate. Meanwhile, Yoo Jung notices a gun lying beside the road, but when she tries to pick it up, she finds a chopped hand holding it. Out of fear, she screams loudly, alerting the teacher and other students. Un Young then proceeds to follow the trail of blood, and after a while, she discovers the strange creatures with tentacles and the dead bodies of students from other schools. Shocked and horrified, she screams for the kids to run. Startled by the chaos around, the creatures suddenly come alive and start attacking the group. Teacher Park Un Young grabs a gun and shoots randomly at the creatures to protect the students, but she eventually runs out of bullets and gets killed by one of them. Another soldier who comes to their aid is decapitated by the spheres, leaving the students with no choice but to flee. As they run through the streets, they come across more dead bodies and spheres. Despite the chaos and confusion, the soldiers urge the students to keep moving and not give up. However, some students like Ha Na are overwhelmed with fear, especially after witnessing the death of their teacher. She locks herself inside a car, refusing to let her friends inside. Fortunately, Sergeant Kim Won Bin is able to reunite most of the kids, but they still worry about the fate of those who are missing. Elsewhere, we see the brats enjoying a modest feast at the convenience store, oblivious to the chaos unfolding outside. As they prepare to leave, they spot 
one of the mysterious creatures and begin playing with it, unaware of the grave danger it possesses. Their playful attitude quickly dissipates, though, as it attacks them abruptly, making them realize that the sphere is not as harmless as it seemed. Following this, an intense fight ensues as the brats struggle to keep themselves alive. In the end, however, they somehow manage to trap the creature in the freezer. To their shock, it becomes inactive under cold temperatures and eventually dies. Meanwhile, the other students are also fighting for survival, supporting each other and battling the strange monster creature. They eventually reunite under the leadership of Lieutenant Lee and Kim Won Bin, but they are shaken to the core by what they have seen. Later, all of them gather at a place, and Kim Won Bin updates Lieutenant Lee on the casualties and hands him a watch belonging to a dead soldier. He also reveals that he has given the students three bullets each to shoot at the creatures. After this, Lieutenant Lee addresses the students, explaining that the spheres are what he has been preparing them to fight against. Suddenly, he senses movement and leads the students with their weapons at the ready, only to discover that it's the two brats. Following this, a flashback reveals Lieutenant Lee's past and how he initially objected to the military's plan to draft high school students, but ultimately agreed to train them and give them a fighting chance. In the present, as the students arrive at their classroom, Ha Na apologizes to her friends for not opening the door earlier. However, the students are in a state of panic, with some of them hastily packing their belongings to leave. Ha Na tries to calm them down, but their fears have already taken hold. Fortunately, Lieutenant Lee arrives and commands them to sit down. He reminds them that it's dangerous outside and that school is the safest place to be. He also stresses that this is the only place where they can train to defend themselves. However, after he leaves, the students decide to vote on whether to stay or go home. All of them except young Su vote to leave. This is because he still wants to appear for the military test so that he can get extra credit points. Unfortunately, this only angers the bully, Il Ha, and he starts a fight with young Su. As all this is happening, most most of the students feel like the adults are manipulating them, causing them to feel frustrated and powerless. They vote again, but Young Su still chooses to remain behind. So, Il Ha loses his temper and viciously attacks him once again. After the tense voting, Yu Jung and Young Shin, the student leaders, meet with Lieutenant Lee to discuss the situation. However, the latter drops a bombshell that there is no home for them to go back to. He reveals that their parents are most likely in a shelter, and finding them will be near impossible right now. The lieutenant then emphasizes that they are now soldiers in a war, and as such, they cannot afford to leave. Hearing this news, the other students are overwhelmed with anger and sadness. That night, the training resumes and Lieutenant Lee pushes the students to the point of exhaustion. Some of them even break down and plead that they cannot continue anymore. Later, as the students are lamenting their situation, Sergeant Kim Won Bin reassures them that they are doing everything to get rid of the creatures. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Lee goes to inspect the sphere that landed on the school grounds and recalls how the military tried to create weapons that could destroy them. After countless trial and error, they discovered that only depleted uranium ammunition can destroy the small spheres. Unfortunately, they did not have enough ammunition or soldiers, which is what led to the recruitment of high school students for the fight against the spheres. After dinner, the students hold a meeting to discuss their escape plans. Their first order of business is to send a group to confirm whether their parents have been taken to a shelter. Chi Yol, who lives closest to the school, is chosen along with some other boys. Later, they try to execute their plan, but their attempt to sneak out is thwarted when soldiers spot them, and a long chase ensues before they are eventually apprehended. In response to the attempted escape, Lieutenant Lee punishes all of them, emphasizing that they are now soldiers, not privileged students. He warns them that desertion will result in a court-martial and execution. After this, the students return to their barracks, humiliated and angry. However, they are still not ready to give up on their escape plan. During a protest after lunch, Commander Park, Young Il, and his soldiers attempt to halt the students' exodus. He pulls out a gun and fires a warning shot, while Lieutenant Lee arrives to remind the students about the significance of the upcoming scholastic test. However, they remain unyielding, refusing to be swayed by the promise of credit points. In the midst of this commotion, a sphere suddenly drops, triggering a frenzied attack. Despite Lieutenant Lee's attempts to urge the students back to their classrooms, it is too late. The spheres have already descended upon them. The soldiers fight valiantly to fend off the assault, while also safeguarding the students. Tragically, most of the students are unable to escape the onslaught. Despite their efforts to assist one another, Commander Park Young Il chooses to abandon his men and flees in his car, only to meet a gruesome fate. As chaos ensues and more deadly spheres rain down upon them, Yu 
Jung takes charge and mobilizes some of the students to make a run for the classrooms. Sergeant Wan Bin, despite his best efforts, is unable to save a fellow comrade, while Young Shin somehow manages to find his girlfriend and keep her safe. Thankfully, Na Ra proves to be a skilled and fearless soldier as she grabs a gun and shoots down the dangerous spheres with incredible accuracy. Her bravery saves many lives and inspires the others to keep fighting. With the situation becoming increasingly dangerous, Lieutenant Lee and Sergeant Wan Bin strategize on how to lead the students to safety. They arm the kids and order them to grab their gear from the barracks, giving clear instructions and explaining their exit plan. Left with no choice, the students follow their lead, running towards the ground floor while Na Ra provides cover for them. After a while, they reach the military cars outside, and Lieutenant Lee orders them to run towards the trucks. Na Ra continues to provide cover as the students arm themselves and take aim at any threats. Sadly, not everyone makes it to the truck in time, as a few students are left behind. The episode ends with Lieutenant Lee managing to stop the truck just in time for Sergeant Wan Bin to jump on and drive off to safety. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.